Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another installment of An Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy. Today we're going to continue looking at some basics. We're, we're going to uh, take a look at uh, sort of a standard approach, which I call the constant dive angle approach. And we're going to look at what the impact of changing the dive angle is on that approach. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, whiteboard session on that, and then we're going to head out to the range and take a look. So, let's get started. We'll check in at the field quickly. Looks like we have a Harrier headed to the runway, which is good. We'll be using the Harrier again today on the test range. Uh, I really like the HUD and it shows us the things we need to know. So um, that's what we'll be flying today. He's getting out there and ready to take off. So uh, let's go inside and um, take a look at the whiteboard. Okay, so let's take a look at the whiteboard here. We have our plane with a bomb and a target that we want to drop the bomb on. And the pilot is going to make his approach at a constant dive angle. So as before, here we have the bomb fall line, and obviously where it intersects the ground is the point of impact. As the pilot flies along his dive line, the bomb impact point moves along the ground. If the pilot wants to hit the target, he just has to wait until the bomb impact point intersects with the target, and voila. The bomb falls and hits the target. Okay, so what's the impact of the dive angle on that whole process? To illustrate it, let's take a look at a plane diving at a much steeper angle. You can see that the scenario is basically the same. The plane flies along its dive line and the bomb impact point moves along the ground. The biggest difference is that it's not moving quite as quickly and, and also that the pilot doesn't have as long to line it up on the target. Of course, the end point of this uh, progression would be a vertical dive, like here, in which case the bomb fall line doesn't move at all, and so the pilot can basically pickle whenever they want and hit the target. So in summary, if you use a shallower dive angle, you'll generally approach at a lower speed and have longer to line up on the target, but your release point will probably be less precise. If you dive more steeply, you're going to end up picking up more speed. Things are going to happen a lot more quickly, but your release point will be more precise. So let's go out to the range and see that in practice. Okay, we're out at the iron bombing test range, coming around to the back of the range, getting ready to set up for our first run. We're just going to do a series of really non-tactical approaches looking at the effect of dive angle today. These are not meant to be textbook in any way. It's just kind of a chance for us to take a look at how the dive angle affects the way things look in the cockpit and how it affects the way the bombs drop. The other thing I am quite happy to note is that I am certainly not an expert in flying the Harrier or in dropping bombs. So uh, if there are some little bit of sloppiness in the flying, then I apologize for that, but hopefully we can all learn from that as well. Okay, we've taken a nice long run south, so we can do this first approach at a fairly shallow angle. And now we're turning in. And setting up for the approach. See the target on the DMT. And we're going to make this approach at uh, around 15 degrees. And as you can see, we've got lots of time to get ourselves lined up. Okay, let's pause for a minute and take a look at the symbology on the screen. Here's the total velocity vector. Where it is on the dive angle ladder tells you what dive angle we're at, and we're around 17 degrees. Uh, you can see here's the bomb fall line, and it leads down to the CCIP cross. This solid bar in the middle means that we're actually looking at the reflected cross. So the cross isn't actually on screen yet, it's down below the nose. So, an important thing to note here. Uh, if you think back to our whiteboard diagrams, is that once we have chosen a point to dive at, if we're going to dive at a constant dive angle, then this point will determine what our drop height will be. So if you want to know what your drop height is going to be, look at the distance between the total velocity vector and the target during the dive. Okay, let's start it up again. Looks like we're pretty well lined up. Now we just have to keep it on target. <coughs> Oops, we keep drifting off to the right a little bit there. Try and pull it back in. Come on, try and pull it back in. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Still haven't seen the pipper on screen yet. We're almost there. 
Okay, there's the pipper. And there's the drop. Now, one thing to note there was we pulled out at a pretty low altitude, 2,000 feet. Uh, and even though these aren't supposed to be tactical approaches today, uh, that'll be a factor later on. Uh, 24 meters, not great, but to be fair, we probably hit the point we aimed at. Um, if we want to do better than that, we're just going to have to improve our aim. Okay, here we are on another approach. Uh, this time we're going to dive a little bit more steeply, but we're still going to start from a ways back and kind of do this by by slowly increasing our dive angle or kind of bunting into the target rather than doing a full-scale roll-in. Uh, we'll try and get up to about a 30 degree dive angle this time. So let's again, let's get rolled in over the target now. You can see we can't even actually dive at 30 degrees yet or we'd be below the target. So we'll have to hold the nose up a little bit longer. Keep checking to see where that 30 line comes up. There it is. Now we're going to pull down to the 30 line now. We're going to be dropping pretty low because the velocity vector is pretty close to the target like we talked about before. But get it lined up good and steady. Just keep the bomb fall line over the target. And there's the pickle. Okay, that's a decent drop. Now let's go try it again. Uh, this time we'll do another 30 degree approach, but we'll do it uh, from a roll in this time as opposed to doing the bunting method like we did last time. So we're starting a little closer to the target. Pull it down, looking for that 30 line and looking to put the TVV on the line over the target, line up the bomb fall line. You can still see it. it's still, we still have a fair bit of time to do this. And we're not really rushing it. And the pipper isn't even on screen yet, so we just need to hold it steady, get it over the target. Wait for the pipper. Wait for the pipper. See, we're not really diving too steeply. And there's the pickle. And we're pulling out at a little under 3,500 feet. And let's see what the drop looked like. And eh, decent. Okay, this time let's go up and do a little bit higher dive angle approach. So, we're uh, getting ready to roll in again here. A little bit closer to the target. We're going to roll in and try to do about a 40 degree dive angle. So, actually we need to get up a little closer to the target before we fully roll in. Okay, so now we can adjust ourselves. You can see the target. We're looking for that 40 line this time. There it is. It's above the target, so we can take it. Line up the bomb file line. So you can see things are happening a little bit more quickly now. Don't have as much time to get ourselves straightened out. We're actually doing a little bit more than 40 degrees here, about 41, 42. There's the drop. And we're pulling out at around 4,000 feet. Maybe got down a little under 4,000, and good drop. Okay, well let's do it one more time, and uh, do it at an even higher angle this time. So now we're getting ready to roll in one more time. This time we're going to try and do it at about 50 degrees. Okay, there's the target. That looks good. So again, we're going to pull around. And as we come around, we're looking for that 50 line. We want to put the velocity vector on the 50 line and above the target. And things are definitely happening a little faster now. Get it there, get it there, get it there. And there's the drop. And this time we're pulling out uh, you know, above almost 6,000 feet. And still a nice accurate drop. So. Um, think that that sort of proves the points that we were talking about on the whiteboard. Uh, the higher the drop uh, dive angle, uh, clearly the less time we have to get ourselves sorted out. Things are a little bit more exciting. But uh, I think it also shows that we do have a little bit more time um, to get the pickle point right. And so you know, we're actually a little bit more precise. So uh, that's going to do it for today. I hope you're enjoying the series. Please subscribe if you want to see more of them. But for now, 
This is going to be Sidekick, signing off.